There we go. All right. Well, I hope you're having a wonderful afternoon, much better than our Zoom people are. But uh, my name is Jay Lickus. I'm the marketing coordinator at Benavia. And I want to welcome everybody. And again, thank you for your patience. Um, I, I'm sure we lost a few people in the interim, but if you're troopers and you want to carry on, we'll go ahead and do this. Do we got a thumbs up from everybody? Sure, why not? Excellent. I'm in. First lesson of the day, where's your reaction button? Look in the lower right hand, you'll see a, a button that says reactions with a smiley face. Yes. Click on that, and there you go. They're catching on. Uh, I don't. Lower right corner? Yes, there's a little smiley face with a cross on its head. It says reactions. It may be a little different for you if you're on a, an iPad. Or... Well, I'm on, a, I'm on a Samsung or an Android phone. Okay. So... I, don't, I don't have anything. I've got three pages of people, too, but that I have to scroll through, but no, I, that's the biggest difference between working on a PC and working on your phone. Phones are fantastic if you just want to watch and ask questions, but if we get working in the background or breakout rooms or anything, obviously there's not enough screen space to do that. And then if you want to watch everybody, then you have to scroll through all the pages because there's only so much room on the screen. So. <laughs> Okay. If you can find a button, Dan, that says view, and you click on the view, you can actually look and there'll be a, options between just looking at me, which is the speaker, looking at the gallery, and now they have a new one called immersive, which is kind of a fun background like you're at a football game. That's why originally when I came on, I had the football game on. So, well, well let's move forward. Um, hopefully everything's still there in the background. Yes, I still have some polls and such. So if you can, I'm going to throw up a couple polls because I'd like to see what kind of level of engagement you folks have had with Zoom. So let me throw the first one up here and we'll see how many Zoom meetings you've been at. You can just quick, quickly click on whatever answer you uh, think you're on there. And this is one of the fun parts of Zoom is you can do polls, surveys, all kinds of things. You can actually turn them into games as well. We have had Zoom meetings with family where we played bingo in the background. Um, the whiteboard and the annotation board, you can do uh, uh, what's that fun game where you try to guess what people are drawing? It's, uh, I don't know. I'm, te I'm testing you, aren't I? No. <laughs> We don't know. I don't know anything. <laughs> it will be a 20 minute test when this is all over with. So, Pictionary. Pictionary. Thank you, Leanne. That's it. All right. Well, we got some poor soul that's been on 20 or more Zoom meetings like me. Mm. Leanne has. Uh, yeah. Through work, I can see that. Between that and Slack and Teams and all the other platforms, uh, somewhere through mid 2021, um, I stopped counting how many Zoom meetings I've been on because of the pandemic, but it was somewhere over 500. And uh, it was just every life was two or three Zoom meetings. So, well, thank you. It looks like the majority of us have only had one to five Zoom meetings. So I'm going to go ahead and start relatively basic. I've got a little bit of a PowerPoint I want to share with you with some of the basic slides and what you'll find on Zoom, not only when you're trying to log on, but when you wanna start your own meetings or join a meeting or just host a meeting, there's different ways you can do it. And they're all very simple. Zoom is the most simplified platform. There's nothing to be afraid of. I, I hate to say this now, but you really can't screw anything up, especially after I just dumped the whole program. <laughs> it's That's good. pretty foolproof until I, I touched it. So uh, let me share my screen here. Here's a little, here I'm going to show you a picture of the original Zoom meetings back in the uh, 80s. I bet you didn't realize that the uh, Brady Bunch were that far. As, wow. Uh, we were doing Zoom <laughs> meetings way back in the 80s. So. They knew more than we did. A um, couple seconds here, the uh, PowerPoint will pop up. You'll start to see, instead of me, you'll see the uh, Zoom PowerPoint. 
So we got a thumbs up on that one. How to use, how to use Zoom, the big whatever. How to use Zoom. Some of the things I'll touch on real quick today is how to set up Zoom in your own account, how to navigate through Zoom, uh, some of the important settings you'll need. There's a lot of settings in the background, but there's just a few that'll get you through a lot of different meetings and such. And then like I spoke to, opening, joining, or hosting a meeting, and actually going in and scheduling meetings. So uh, some of the things to look for, um, I know Dan, you've got your, uh, your uh, mobile device, but most of you will have a uh, toolbar either at the top or bottom of your screen. Is that true? Yes. Fantastic. So that's- I don't have anything. Toolbar. You probably have to scroll her down, Dan, to find that. But there is a toolbar that'll allow you to work with your video, your um, audio. There's chat boxes. You can see how many folks are on the call and things like that. So uh, that's the most important part. But most people ask, what, what is Zoom? And Zoom is basically just an online, in the cloud conferencing platform. So what it allows is anybody from one to a thousand people can be on the same screen, seeing the same and talking at the same time. So it's all, it's, it's the, the um, you know, the fruition of the ultimate remote communication. Everybody gets together in one place without really being there. It's kind of a, a two-dimensional party. So we can chat, we can conference, we can exchange work, we can show PowerPoints like I am. You can color and draw and make pictures and all kinds of things together, so. Um, I highly recommend if you haven't been on Zoom a lot to just start your own free Zoom um, program. You sign up, it's free. You can host up to 100 different participants on your Zoom calls. Um, the group meetings usually go about 40 or 45 minutes. With the pandemic, they've kind of dropped that constraint. And they let your meetings go on for an hour, maybe an hour and a half sometimes. I think they've really upped their bandwidth here in the last six to eight months. So people can, even with the free platform, can stay on Zoom for over an hour. And it has all the buttons and, and fun things in the background as if you went and paid for it. Now, I've, I've paid for it. We're on a paid program right now. And it's relatively, you see, 149. Plus, you get discounts, and as a nonprofit, we got a discount. But some larger meetings, folks that have you know international audiences, they can spend you know a good amount of money to get a really complicated platform. So, um, one of the important things when you're starting out on Zoom is how do you get on? I'm sure everybody here today saw my link, and I set up my Zoom link so that all you have to do is click on it. So it has the password already embedded in it, and it's got the address of the Zoom meeting itself embedded right in it. So all you have is somewhere from seven to 12 digits that tell you, here's where we're going to the meeting. But you, when you wanna do this yourself, you can either join a meeting by doing that, or you can join on zoom.us and then find the meeting with the link or you can host your own meeting, or you can just sign in and start a meeting at random and invite people from there. So there's many ways to do it. If you look at the opening page here at the bottom, you'll see there's a register now button. That's where you would go in, enter all your information, get your account set up, and you can get your own free Zoom platform. So that's something to play with afterwards when we get off. When you create your own Zoom, like I said, you can Sign in two ways. One is the way I just talked about, is you go in, put in your email address, your uh, not so personal information, whatever you want to put in, and you're you know within two or three minutes you have an account and you can invite anybody you want to your Zoom meetings, or you can sign in with what they call SSO or single sign on, and that's where you sign on using an existing account somewhere else on the internet. So if you already have on Facebook. You might have one on um, uh, Snapchat or other places. Um, let me see if I can find a picture of that. It'll be right there. There you go. 
So you've had, if you have a Google email account or Facebook, or if you have other places where you already have accounts with information set up, Zoom will even set up your account for you just by linking on that. So it's all very secure. Like I said, I've done 500 or more of these and I have never had anybody get onto the Zoom call that I didn't already you know, request. Um, the link you, you click on is very secure. Unless you pass that on to somebody else, you know, you don't have to worry about people listening to personal conversations or listening to business conversations. Um, it's become a very secure platform. So let's bounce back a little bit when we create, we're creating our Zoom account. See, let's say you've got all that set up. On the mobile, I think I lost uh, Dan there. Is he still with us? Well, I'm here. Still here. So you can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you perfectly. Okay. Or your mobile, you would just download the app from your app store or the Play Store. So obviously you've got that already, I believe, if you're on your phone, right? Yes. Yes, okay. I do. So same thing, follow your on instructions, just like the desktop and you have an account set up. Um, I've, had, I've had calls before where the video works very well on a phone, but the audio doesn't. So I've had folks share a screen with their laptops or their PC and their phone at the same time. So you can even do that and it doesn't cause any issues. Quick look at your account settings. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go live with Zoom and let you look at how I do things in the background. So once we get through this real quick, I'll, I'll go through some of these lives so you can see how I do it. But this is your basic account settings for your account. So it asks for your email. and. And, and what kind of meetings you wanna have, your time zone, your format of your date. You know, if you wanna do it 12 months out of the year or 12 hours a day. So you set that up basically in the background and that will stay for every Zoom meeting you have. You can go back and change that later. If you look to the side and the, plat uh, the little column on the side, there's a, uh, a setting here called settings, a button called settings where you can go back in and change anything you want per meeting or you can make sure it's on all the meetings at any one time. So you're launching your meetings. You click on zoom.us in your browser and you know there's people getting ready to join you. You click on your launch meeting button and your Zoom will come up just like our picture panel on the right side. So you can use the meeting link, which I send you very simply. Or like I said, you can go into the Zoom app itself, click on join a meeting, find the meeting, and then click on the link from there. So if you ever get lost, just go on zoom.us and you'll be able to find what you're looking for. We've got somebody else joining us, which is nice. Okay, there's your sign-in sheet again. When I said there was little settings to the right or to the left column, this is what will happen when you click on settings. So you have your general meeting settings. You have video settings, audio settings, share screen if you're hosting an event. You can open up chat boxes for everyone. You can change your backgrounds, your filters, how you record the meeting. I will record every meeting I do for Benavia because we save it and we put it up on our YouTube channel afterwards so the folks that don't make it to the meeting or want to re-watch something can go back at their own convenience and watch it. That's a great, great aspect of Zoom meeting. You can change short profile, things like that. So most of you, when you get on today, saw the opening screen that looks like this. And I, I go back to my earlier statement. You can either host a new meeting, join an existing meeting, schedule your own meeting, or you can share screens. When I took this picture, I had no upcoming meetings. You can see that. That was way back May 7th of last year. So that was something off there. So if you go to the meeting real quick, oops, sorry about that. If you're gonna schedule your own meeting, here's the screen that will come up. You'll click on schedule a meeting. You give your, your meeting a name. So today, the name of our meeting was how to Zoom. You could put a little description in it for your, your uh, attendees saying, we're gonna learn about Zoom setting up meetings if you wanna do it that way or something more specific. You set the date and I believe with Zoom, you could go over two years in advance if you wanna set up meetings. 
So you can do out to 2024 now, set up a time. They may have changed that. I, I don't have any any further than that, but that's usually as far as you can go. You can set up your meeting duration anywhere from an hour and it goes in five minute increments. So very, very simple to use, very simple to set up. So I will stop there and see, do you have any questions yet? Anybody have questions? A little overwhelmed. <laughs> What's that? Karen? A little Karen? overwhelmed. <laughs> well, it'll become, we go a little bit live here, it becomes easier. I know there's a lot of information right off the bat here. So, but uh, if, if you have questions, just raise your hand, throw up your little icon, and uh, I will try my best to look for it and make sure that I answer it. Um, a quick tip, though, you know, how I told you I have my Zoom link that I sent to all you folks already pre-packaged and it already has the link and the password information in it. Um, when you're setting up a password for Zoom, make sure you use a password. So you've heard about Zoom bombing, just like photo bombing. Folks will get out there and you know they'll find your email address and then somebody will put their Zoom link um, password as I Zoom or just Zoom, and that's easy. So make sure you got a good solid password. When you do that. But it does have an option, like I said, to set your password up in the invitation link itself so it's never visible. That's a good security measure. Hosting a meeting. When you have a meeting, you can have it with video on, off, or just sharing your screen. Um, sharing your, I'll show you how to share the screen in a few minutes, but that's where you'll get to see different Word documents. You know, you can use Adobe, you can use uh, PowerPoint presentations, JPEGs, you can share video in the background for everybody, which is really nice. And then there's your meeting settings. Those can get kind of overwhelming, like Karen said, but there's a lot of things you can do in the background, basically. In the middle on the left under meeting, you'll see in meeting basics. The first couple times you do a Zoom meeting, that's all you need. It just sets up people join your meeting, whether you wanna keep them in a waiting room, uh, whether you wanna have the polls like I had set up and you set the times and the different aspects of your meeting in the background so that they're all standard. There's uh, even, see, so there's all kinds of passcode things you can do. You can authorize settings. If you have somebody that shows up that you don't want on the meeting, you can throw them off. You control, which is really nice. Once you get your meeting up and running, if you're the first person on like I was today, that's what you'll see. You'll just see yourself. But when more people come on, that's when you have even more pictures. So views, if you're listening to me, some of you might just see my face. Is anybody just seeing my face talking? Nope. No, I'm people. You see everybody. So everybody's got a gallery view where you see all the uh, attendees at the meeting, which is always nice. So you can see what people are doing. I always call it one of the positives of the pandemic is that if it wasn't for Zoom, we'd never see what the inside of other people's houses look like. So we, <laughs> they, they see their laptop. They got to clean up for Zoom. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, there's all kinds of etiquette there as well. And we'll touch on that as, as well in a little bit. But I've had people fall asleep on my Zoom meetings. I've had them eat lunch. I've had them, you know, their dog take over for them and sit on the desk in front of the camera. Uh, <laughs> I've had people fall asleep. So it takes all kinds of different uh, experiences if you're going to be running your own Zoom meetings. That's funny. Of your uh, task bar. That's what it looks like there. So other than, other than Dan's cell phone or his smartphone, you'll see the different settings at the bottom. So the only one that'll be different from what you can see is the security button. You will not have that as a participant. That's only up to the host. So the host has removing people or muting people or um, closing their video. So once you're, once you're the host of a meeting, you can do everything you want. So when we're getting close to going live on this, so 
just wanted to show you the screen of the settings. This is where I was talking about you set up the meeting and you have basic meeting settings. So you can touch on the general video, audio, and you can test your speakers, your microphones, make sure everything's set up properly ahead of time. So, and then when you get on those, there's a little more, this is the screenshot of what your video settings look like. Go into your uh, audio settings and do the exact same thing. You can see normally when things up, I'm pretty bored in the background. So um, I'll stop again for questions. I know it's kind of overwhelming, but let's do that. And then I will go ahead and go live with my screen so you can see what I'm doing. How's that sound? That's good. Okay. Any questions so far? Not yet. Not too uh uh, two frames here. So that last screen that you were on, is that how you get the different backgrounds? Yes, that's your, your video settings will do your, your backgrounds. And you can, they even have a new beta test where you can change the way you look on the screen. So it's interesting. You can, oh. wear, you can give yourself a mustache, you can wear a hat, oh. <laughs> stuff. So. so how can I delete that extra one? I'm sorry? Can I delete that extra one? Like I have two. You you have two screens right now? Yeah. Are you, yeah. It looks like you're, is, you're on with both your iPhone and are you are both of them on your iPhone? No, I'm on the computer. As well. So that's that's what that is. So oh. you can do that. That's oh, 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 that's the iPhone. Okay, I get it now. One's okay. an iPhone and one's your computer. So that goes back to my example of you can join both ways if you want. That works. So how can you delete that then? Uh, you, as long as you're live, you can't. You can, can. Turn, you can turn off your video if you want. So if you click on the three, let me, let me, if you go on your stop video button on your iPhone, do you see a button that says stop video? Well, I just have a list. So. There you go. You did it. Oh. Just, just here. Good. So if you don't want a video up, it'll just leave a black screen or you can do a background. And I'll go ahead and show you that in a second. Oh, okay. uh, like if you're looking at mine and I wanted to change my virtual background and uh, let's see, like say I wanted to just do Benavia. There's my background, how I could change it. And then I could take my picture off and just leave the background on as well. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. so be wondering why is that backwards? Did you notice that? Well, there's actually a, in your settings it says mirror my video. So if you click on that, and I, I think I look better from the left, so I always leave it mirrored. What do you think, right or left? So, right. <laughs> all, all matter of preference on how you want to set that up. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, so that way we can do this all together. Oh, I hope it lets me do this because I hope it didn't dump me off. Oh. No, you're still there. Do, do, do. Okay. So you should be able to see what I see on the screen now. So you've got like a, uh, all our pictures are on the right side. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? And then like, I'll get rid of this box. Did that go away? You see a picture of me with my hand on my head, my head on my hand? Yes, got that. And you're here. Okay. What are you trying to do? Well, I was going to try to make my my Zoom live so you could see exactly what I'm doing in the background. So let's say I'm going to put it. Can you see me moving the your uh, screenshots around? No. No. I think when it dumped me, it dumped my ability to do this. So, um, let's try. it's just a solid picture. Okay. Okay, we should be on the video settings screen. Do you see that come up? Oh, I see yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, so I do have these capabilities. So, what I have done is I've given you the power to see what's on my screen. When you're hosting your own meeting, the folks 
that are, your attendees cannot see what you see on your screen. So you can move your stuff around. Like if I have it in gallery view, I can move your pictures off to the side while I'm looking at my presentation. Um, I see people come in on the chat room. I see people come in as participants, all kinds of different things. So when you're hosting the capability of doing all that and you don't see it, now you'll get a bird's eye view of how to do these things. So let's look at our video. We've got this up here, it's our video settings, which I'll show you again how I clicked on that. On the bottom of my screen, you see my toolbar pop up. It's a black toolbar. I'm gonna click on the down arrow and click on video settings. And that brings up your video settings. So it's kind of nice, you know, most of, the, most of us on here are beautiful people, but we can mirror our image, like I said, to however it looks nice. Um, it'll automatically touch up your appearance if you want. If your room's dark or if your room's light, you can change that in the background, which is really nice. It adjusts for low light. So um, these are great features you can use. I'll go ahead and change my background here. I'm gonna drop down to background and filters. And you notice that all the backgrounds that I have downloaded sitting right here in a file. So I've downloaded a bunch of different pictures. Those, okay? And you can choose those whenever you want. So let's say I wanna to go to the beach. There's my background, I just click on that. Uh, I got an official business meeting, I have to go to the boardroom. Everybody thinks I'm sitting in the boardroom right now. <laughs> I, made, I made a commitment to myself, my uh, New Year's residence was to read more. So now I, uh, we just remodeled the house and put in a library so I can get my read. Yeah. So you can go in and download virtually any pictures you want or any background you want. If you look right here, I'm circling around a, a plus and a, can you see that? Uh -huh. If you click on that and then scroll down, it says add image. Click on that, it'll take you out of Zoom and I just happen to have it set up in a file where I have all my Zoom backgrounds. So I can choose any of these. So let's say I wanna be on an airplane. I'm gonna download, click on this. And now it's in my backgrounds. And there I am in the inside an airplane. It's that simple. That is cool. You can use anything. And you're probably wondering, what? How did he do that? That's amazing. You can't read it if I'm in the way. So, but you can put virtually anything you want on there. Um, like I said, the Benavia logo, I have, I use this for rotary. I have rotary logos and, um, you know, there's some that are crazy and facetious looking. If you see the flying cow, you <laughs> do virtually anything. <laughs> have fun with that. That's something that's a, it's a personality thing. So that's true. Yeah. If anybody remembers this background. That's Abbey Road from the Beatles. <laughs> so, so you have to do there is click on add image and then add scroll down click on add image and you can put any picture like i said that you want in the background so it's kind of a kind of a cool feature if you don't want any background it'll just leave it blank or blurry or you can leave your face clear and just blur the background so another feature um I was talking about the studio effects. If you want to have a little fun with this. Um, winter time, it's a little cold. If you look in the bottom here, it says studio effects. You click on that button. And on the side, it allows you to put in your own eyebrows. Maybe, <laughs> maybe a goatee. Studio so, effects, that's good. So you could be like Hollywood here. Um, let's see, you can change the opacity. So my mustache is getting darker. I could put in a goatee. And you can change your lip color. And you're handsome. It's uh, you can do all kinds of things with this. So people really don't have to what you look like. So there you go, I look like a Mexican pirate. So and you can apply these to all future, <laughs> all future meetings if you like. How about lots of hair? Um, they used to have hair. I don't know what they did with that. They must have felt like they were hurting some people's feelings with that one. I'm not sure. So there was a few more things when it first came out in beta testing, but these are the ones. 
Oops, yeah. yeah. So we don't want any of that fun stuff, but that's just something fun to play with, especially when you're, you know, working with your family or you got your grandkids on. Mm -hmm. yeah, love to play with things like that. Um, any questions on your uh, backgrounds and filters at all? We'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah, the big that statement is the more you play with it, the more you learn. So play with it. Yeah. And then there's advanced settings for it where you can do video processing. Um, you can actually put a video in where your uh, screenshot is if you do that. So you can you get pretty creative on this on this platform. Uh, very nice. Yeah. Now let's say we're talking about uh, our audio setup. When before you get on a meeting, it's important, especially when there's a lot of people. Maybe there's 20, 30, 40 people on the call, and um, you want to make sure your audio is loud enough for everybody to hear. Many times there's a lot of background noise, and uh, they actually have a way to get rid of that for you. So you can go in and test your speakers so you can hear people. So here's your volume bar going back and forth. And if you want to test your speakers, I hope you can hear. So did you, everybody hear the little uh, music in the background? No. No, it didn't come well. It's a little chime, which kind of lets you know how loud or how soft your uh, speakers are that way if you can hear people and it's the same for your microphone right here is a test a microphone button and you just do a little recording testing 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 and we'll see if it plays it back for you. did that come through for you I didn't, no. didn't play okay that's a lesson learned if there's a lot of background noise, you can go to suppress background noise. I know most of us are probably from the surprise area. Like right now I have the F-35s flying over. So I keep the noise on suppress so you can't hear that. But sometimes that gets relatively loud. And then and I tried this before, um, that test mic, it, uh, the volume button didn't turn. And, and here, does it turn there? Can you turn it? The unmute button? Back and forth, I mean. Like that button. The test microphone or your unmute button? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. The volume, like, can you move this? Yes, you can move the, move yourself. Back yeah, it, did, it didn't work for me when I tried it before. Oh, it, it definitely should. Do you have an external microphone? Uh, or you no laptop or your pc microphone yeah laptop mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's what i'm using and uh but it should when you go in to test your microphone you can adjust it okay. yourself. so that's right okay. excellent so that takes care of your audio and video there's some other fun things you can do as far as sharing your screen and if you look at the during the meeting, like if you don't want to ask a question or you don't you feel that the moderator is not seeing your hand raise or they don't see your hand button jump up, there's what's called chat boxes in the background. Mm -hmm. Can everybody see the chat box come in? Right on the bottom, I clicked where it says chat and there's a thought bubble. Does everybody locate that? <laughs> This one here? It's, With a red circle around? Yeah, it'll, it'll click up yeah. and chat. Mm -hmm. And then you can type in a mess message. Now there's two ways to message when you're in a chat box. One, you can message to everybody. So I just sent a message to everyone saying hello. Or if you click on the bubble that says everyone and you can pick out somebody in the meeting and send them a message. So I will click on, for example, I'll click on Karen and I'll send you a message and say hello. That will go directly to your chat box, the inbox. Nobody else can see that. So that's a message between us. So I'm gonna go ahead and send it one to Dan and see if it comes up on his phone there. So it comes pretty quick. Hey, I, I got it. Got it, perfect. Yep. Perfect, perfect. 
So everybody, you can converse as much as you want on the side, sending messages back and forth. Or if you just want to send a question to the moderator, like to me when I'm talking, I can get to it when I look at it. It'll pop up on my screen. So if I you know, take a little break, then I can go ahead and answer the question. So it's a great way to get to your questions during a meeting if you're talking to somebody. Tom, I just sent you a message. Did you get it? Yep. Fantastic. See it? It's working. And then uh, let's see if I can send one to Mike. Oops, misspelled it. And you don't have to just send chat You, as far as text messages. If you look over to the right, you'll see a, a couple of icons. One looks like a piece of paper folded. You can send files as well. So let's say I wanna send an attachment to my message to Dan, I would click on that icon and it would take me out of Zoom into wherever I wanted to go, my documents file, or let's say I wanted to send you a copy of this presentation. I could do that as well, or I can just send you a smiley face. And that's a, uh, that can go to everybody or just to one person. So. I didn't get anything. I didn't either. What's that? I didn't receive anything. You didn't get, didn't. You didn't get a smiley face? Where is it supposed to appear? In your chat box. So you have to go back down to your tool, your toolbar on the bottom, click on the chat bubble, and it should come up in the middle of your screen. Chat bubble. Hmm. There's a there's a little thought. You see a little thought bubble? It says chat underneath it. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at my screen, do you see my toolbar on the bottom? It's a black bar, has a green and red top to it as I'm sharing it. I don't think so. I don't I don't think I have any of that. Okay. It should be there. Let's see if I can pull that up there. How about now? Do you see it in the center of my screen? Nope. Nope. See, nothing. You're not seeing it. I I don't see you live. I, I have the chat bubble, but I don't have any smiley face or something from you. Okay. I see you talking down here, but not in that big screen there. Not in the little. There it is. It's just a solid picture there. I got it. Excellent. Okay, so yeah, the chat box has to be open. Hey Jay, I got a question. Go ahead. Um, you're the moderator of this, all these settings that you've been going through, um, are they available to me as a participant or are those just for the moderator? Like, so can I make, draw pictures of your face and things, you know, eyebrows and all that while I'm listening to you or is that just for you? No, that, that is for you as well. You can't draw them on my face, but you can do it on your own. Oh, okay. All right. So I could be doing that. All right. You can do whatever you want in the background. So those, all the basic settings are available to anybody, whether you're a host or a participant. Okay. Kind of nice. And if you're looking, I know again, with, you're on your iPhone, but many times when you have a multitude of people, can you see our pictures in the middle of the screen now? I kind of moved it up. No, I have to page around to find everybody and then, then things will minimize too on me. So it's, it's not working too good with just the phone. It's, yeah, it's a lot tougher. It's more challenging on the telephone, but everybody else that's on a PC, there should be us, you can see seven pictures or six and one that says iPhone. Do you have that in front of you? See that on my I think I'm lost. I just have what you what you chose. It's the same screen than we had for a while with the red circle around that, whatever. Nothing changed. There. Okay. It might have been frozen. Oh, there. now it's moving. I just, I just moved it, so yeah. that would 
Gotcha. Right. But there should be, you should have a toolbar. The circle is still there. <laughs> the circle didn't move, the red circle. Right, okay. But just the box itself moved. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. All right, well, any other, any other questions on video or your audio setups? Now I see you. Now there should be a much larger picture of me in the video setting screen. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, got it. Okay. So some of the ones, um, Dan, you had asked about, the automatic settings, the very simplified ones that everybody has, here's a, here's a screenshot of those. So simple things like when you get in the meeting, do you want it to be full screen with everybody's pictures on there? Or do you want to keep it, you know, kind of minimized off to the side? Um, I talked about how the link is sent out and whether or not you want an already password embedded link. Um, confirm when I leave the meeting, show how much time you've been on. I have a little clock in the corner, it shows that. And, uh, you know, Zoom updates, things like that. So those are some of the general just meeting settings that you could have. Yeah. Boom. I'll go ahead and stop sharing for a second. We should be back to all our pictures on the screen, right? Okay, now, now I'm going to ask Karen, now if you look at the bottom of your screen, can you see the, um, the different tools you can use? It says participant, polls. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I'm sharing my screen, you're not seeing that, but that, um, that should be on the bottom of your screen at all times. Many times you have to scroll over it or it'll go away. It'll just hide itself at the bottom. So if you scroll down and kind of get on top of it, it'll pop up. So I think it's time for another poll. Let's end that one. I don't know how I got out of that. So we're halfway through with it. And I'm gonna launch another poll. How do you, how do you guys feel about being uh, Zoom masters yet? <laughs> we have to practice first. There you go. Start with some simple steps. I think that was Leanne that said you're a Zoom master, huh? No? <laughs> yeah, it takes a while. I said I can participate. <laughs> I've never set up a meeting. But it's very, very simple. And, and like Karen said, it's just a matter of getting in and, and working around all the different windows. It's, it's very simple, very intuitive. So, all right. So we got everybody knows how to participate. And we got, who's the Zoom master? Raise your hand. Somebody's got to raise their hand. We don't have a Zoom master. We had one Zoom master on there. So terrific. We have a shy Zoom master. Def shy. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Talking about some social faux pas with uh, Zoom. Here's usually what happens that uh, the Zoom workers, what, what people see and then what's really happening in the background. So you're sitting in the top. <laughs> that. That's, uh, there's the, the, the hardest part of Zoom meetings is the etiquette that's involved in it. And uh, if we, if on this screen, this is our simplest screen, and this is the one we see the most. And there, there's a few things to take into mind when you're with a big crowd. Now, we're in a comfortable crowd here. Everybody's got a nice picture. It's good size. It's almost like chatting in person. But if you get a very crowded, busy screen, it's hard to tell who's speaking. If you look now at my screen, you should see a yellow bar underneath my picture where I'm talking. That lets you know who the speaker is at all times. So uh, let's see who's not muted. Mike, you want to say something? We're here, but I don't see a yellow bar. I didn't either. Look under your picture when you start talking. Okay, I got to go back. 
Okay, it's popping up on it's under my picture. Yeah, I don't see a yellow bar though. Hmm. It should but... highlight your screen on whoever is talking. <clears throat> that way, you know who the speaker is at all times and what they're doing. Um, when you're the host, you can mute everybody. A lot of times when people are getting on the meeting itself, and there's a lot of chatter going on, and you want to start the meeting, you have right in your picture, there's two buttons. There's one that says mute, and everybody seems to know. But you can click on it and you can come back on. So that's to mute your own microphone. And there's three buttons next to that, and you can stop your video if you want. So let's say you want to go out and get a cup of coffee real quick. You want to stay in the meeting, but you don't want everybody to see you run off. You can just stop your video oh. and you can come back and start your video. Will and you press stop? <laughs> so that's in case you just, uh, like I said, you want to go take, somebody comes to the front door. If you're like me, you get 10 or 12 Amazon packages a day. So you want to <laughs> those up. So you can go ahead and uh, stop your video or your audio at any time. You can also choose your background from those three dots. So you scroll down under that. Is everybody doing this on your three buttons? Scroll over your three buttons on your picture next to your mute button. I don't see any buttons. I don't see buttons. You got to have buttons. In on the, the picture? I don't have any buttons. Hmm. That's interesting. Are we still on the same picture? I could spin that way for a while. It hasn't changed. Put your, put your cursor in the upper right hand corner. Of your own picture. Of your own picture, and then the three buttons show up. Yeah. I just see mute. There's mute, and right mute. next to that, a little square with three buttons. Oh, oh that one. Um, yeah. Scroll over. When you, when you open that up, Yes, then you'll see some more settings. So you can, that's where I was yeah. muted. Oh, yeah. Okay, hide self view. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Very effective. I could see Tom's over there playing with his background. I just saw it blur. That's pretty cool. See, he's learning already. He's already playing on his own. And he could turn, you could change your background at any time while you're there. So you can basically control all the simple things right in front of you there, which is really nice. Um, you can spotlight yourself if you want, which is always interesting. Spotlight. Yeah. So that would be just putting your picture up if you want to look at it. Not many people like to do that. <laughs> so you go back to the gallery view and then you could hide yourself. Now, if you scroll all the way to the bottom of the box, so, so at one point, several of you have found this because you've got your names on there. Like Karen has her name, Tom has her name, Mike has his name on there, and Dan has his as well. Leanne, you've got your um, sign-in name from Zoom. They'll assign you a name on how you originally signed into Zoom. See how mm -hmm. it's Benavia? So if you go back up to your picture, in the upper right hand corner and scroll over where it says the mute button and the three dots, the blue buttons up there, click on the three buttons and scroll all the way down to where it says rename. Oh. And click on that. Okay. Enter screen name. And then type in your screen name. Right. Okay. And now you notice mine changed from Benavia to my name. Oh, that's good. Depending on what meeting you're in, you can put what company you're in, you know, what social group you're part of, or you can just leave your name. So it's, a, it's the simplest thing, but that's where you would do that. Yeah. So I'll put that back on there. So that's kind of fun. That's fun. Got that. Does everybody see the chat button again? I want to go back down there since I got us on full screen. I have everybody in their chat. Yeah. Open up your chat button. You'll see the con. You should see the conversations we've had. So, I said hello to everybody. You should have that. And I said hello to everybody individually. Some of you got smiley faces. So everybody see the chat button there. 
but what are we supposed to see on the participant list or something? Well, next to the participants, you do see polls, the icon for polls. <laughs> and right after that is chat, right in the middle. Do you see chat? Yeah, I see chat. Okay, click on that. Left okay. click. I click, or left click. Mm -hmm. Yeah, left click and it'll open your chat box. Now, do you see anything, Karen? In fact, there's a little box down there. Mm -hmm. I'll send nonverbal feedback, et cetera, like that. Mm, I don't know. It what says that. invite and mute me. That's how it's saying. It should have messages from us. Mm. I'll send you another one, I'll send you an icon. Me another chat. Maybe I didn't write. Okay. Is your chat box open? You should have got a smiley face. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It says now, hello everyone. Hello to me. Hmm. That must be what. Yeah, I got that. Okay. Good. 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 Mm -hmm. So we can do the same to everybody. So if everybody's got their chat chat button open, I'll send you a, uh, a Tom Cruise looking uh, icon from uh, mm -hmm. with the sunglasses on. Yeah, good, sorry too. Okay, so like I said, you could talk to each other by scrolling over where it says two and it says either everyone or if you scroll down, it has everybody's individual name. So you, you can talk during to someone else or talk to the moderator at the same time. So that's kind of fun. I'm going to go ahead and share the screen again, because I want to show you one more thing, which you uh, probably will not run across. I'm going to close out the uh, PowerPoint. I don't want to end the meeting. This is your whiteboard. If you would, um, when, if you'd go to the bottom where it says share screen, everybody see that green icon? Yeah. Okay. That's when you can like, if you're with family or friends or even business, and there's several things you could do in the background. So. Basic, you can see there's a whiteboard. Click on the whiteboard and it opens up a whiteboard. Everybody see that? Uh -huh. Okay, so everybody can see my whiteboard right now. So I could draw on there, do all kinds of different things. I can, I can type on there. Um, I can do stamps. So if somebody's got some information they're sharing, I can, I can do like a, little arrow say, hey, look at this, look at this. So that's kind of nice. And then if you get tired, you can clear it all. So this is like just having your own little um, chalkboard to draw on, to do, you know, football plays or, you know, writing an essay or something with everybody. You can use that platform to do all that information. Good. So that's, that's a fun one to play around with. You can change your colors. You can change your line width. You can change your fonts, everything. So it's a great tool if you have a, a group session going on. You can highlight things in somebody's message if you like, um, you know, spotlight things. So that's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. And if you have something you really like, let's just say I draw something pretty here. I, I draw a perfect box. You can actually save it and it'll be in the same folder that your Zoom meeting is in the end. So if you have any attachments, presentations, PowerPoints that you wanna have with your Zoom meeting recording, you can add those in as well. 
So a very useful tool. Excellent. Any questions on that one? No, no, no. Hmm. Oop, I keep trying to click on that. I keep forgetting that's mine. So and everybody's back again. Let's go. I got one final poll for you and uh, see how well we're doing here. So everybody should be able to see this coming up on your screen. How is Jay doing so far? Don't be bashful. Be honest. I know it's been a lot so far, but. Right. <laughs> I good. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I thought everybody would be at the bottom. So, uh, you lost me a good afternoon. Not so good, eh? <laughs> uh, once again, the best way to do it is just to practice and spend some time on there. If you go onto the website itself, they have all kinds of training videos. Uh, oh. You can set up yourself. And question and answers, their background information is amazing as far as, you know, what they offer to teach you about Zoom. So even I get on there every so often, just as a reminder, because they do updates probably every month or two, and they keep adding new, new and fun things to do with it. So um, appreciate that. It's a great poll. So just another fun thing you do with the poll. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up now. We're, we're about 10 minutes left. And just see if you have um, anything else. Looks like Leon's got another Zoom meeting to go to. So thank you yes. for us. But if anybody has any questions, go ahead and uh, I'll do the best I can to answer them. How often does Benavia have these, uh, you do this class? This particular class on Zoom uh, was by request this time. We have, I don't know if you're familiar with our caregiver support groups and yes. have, those are all, those have all gone back to um, at least Zoom or hybrid meetings where some folks meet in person and some are on Zoom. So folks all of a sudden started to get interested in Zoom again. It kind of died off at the end of last year as we went back into person, but um, I, I do them whenever they're necessary, you know, the Zoom meetings. But as far as our workshop, this is part of our workshop series. And we do at least two of these a month and they're on topics. So um, like coming up on the 26th of this month, we have guest speakers come in from our CARES program. And these are different senior oriented businesses that we work with, we have partnerships with, and they're the experts in their particular field. And like coming up, we have home care. We have a gentleman from Comfort Care, Home Care, Presley Reader is gonna present and talk about all the options of living at home alone, when your independence is waning, when you need help, when you finally make that decision that, you know, it's not as easy as I thought living by myself. But we do different educational events, everything from financial help to tax planning, to how to set up estate planning. Um, we do the differences in assisted living, independent living. Um, we have massage therapy, we have stress management. We do all kinds of different educational workshops and they're all very interactive like this. So that's kind of the key to it is to get to, you know, the questions and problems that you folks have and make sure that, you know, we're here as a resource to you so we can help you with your issues. So did that kind of to your question, I hope? Well, kind of. The reason I asked is uh, with me being on a, on a phone, I've got about zero um, functionality. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't see most of the stuff you were talking about or anything. So, or I basically, I think I can sign into a meeting and look at you and you can look at me and we can talk back and forth past that. I, I don't have any uh, much of the functions at all. You know, like if I wanted to send you a chat or some or an email text, like you sent, you can send it to me, but I don't, I don't, I don't have any way of sending anything back to you. Gotcha. Um, at least my knowledge with this phone right now today i don't i couldn't do it so no that, that's all if i thought i ever got a laptop or something i might set in again you know but that's it that's all we put it out there and if anybody needs the training like i said 
we can do it whenever they want. Um, I, I have a, a, a sorry suspicion that Zoom's not going away anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, with the new variants coming out and we're all going meddling back into two dimensional discussions with folks. I mean, we're not uh, out there in person too much anymore. Um, that Zoom's going to be, you know, the way to go again. So, um, I, I, I don't, you know, there should be Zoom training for iPhones. Do you have an iPhone or an Android, Dan? Android. Android. Okay, I'm a Droid man myself, um, and I've been on them before, so it's interesting. Um, why you weren't? It, it's just a matter of scrolling and finding the right screen. So I'll have to dig into that a little further, but it is a little more cumbersome, like you said. You, you probably missed out on a lot of what we talked about. Right, right. It's the way it is today, so. Okay, well, keep an eye on our website. Um, you know, where you signed up for, for this, we have all our events on our website, on our event page. I also post them on Facebook. We also uh, make sure that you're out there on Twitter and LinkedIn and any way you can find. And we also post them a lot in the, you know, the newspapers, um, newsletters that go out, a lot of the bulletins and stuff, we will post these. So, um, you know, we're, we're here to help. That's what Benavia does. I always tell folks that we're the first, first place to go if you don't know where. Um, we, we have our CARES program. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but we have a, it's a free service. And if you have any questions on caregiving or on, you know, just senior issues, you know, ask us if we don't have the service or we don't know how to do it, we have someone that will. We have thousands of resources resources that we turn to and we will put you in touch with them. So I always tell people, just ask us and we will find a way to help you. That's why we're here. You know, that's that's our kind of our task as a nonprofit agency. So how widespread is Benavia? Are they just in the valley here or Arizona or do they reach out across the country a little bit? We are strictly in the Valley, Dan. So okay. our main campus is on in Surprise, right there on road, just a little bit west of El Mirage. And we have four other program locations, um, our life enrichment programs. We have uh, two of them in Sun City. We have one in Peoria and one in Sun City West. And then we have a couple of offices in the, the Peoria Center, the city center, and one in the Surprise City Center as well. And we have a myriad of different programs, not only just senior. I know I keep referring to our senior programs, but we have family services programs for uh, folks with young kids. We have a daycare and a nursery right there on campus. Uh, we do uh, what's called our home services. So you, if you have a loved one or a neighbor that's struggling at home with their independence, we have volunteers that will help them with grocery shopping. They'll help them with their paperwork. They will um, offer them assisted transportation to doctor's appointments and things like that. So um, they're, they're basically a lot of different resources are offered free that folks can use and help them stay independent as long as possible. Excellent. Well, I hope I haven't hurt you too bad today. Very impressive. I, I totally apologize for the uh, falling apart at the start. I don't know what happened here. <laughs> That was well, not your problem. <laughs> it just <laughs> happens. <laughs> I've got a Mike's got a question. Oh, thank you, Mike. He just said thanks for your help. You're welcome. Uh, the questionnaire, you know, was kind of hard. I thought that you did a terrific job. I just didn't understand everything. <laughs> <laughs> I try to get as much into an hour, an hour and a half, and, and there's a lot. Um, we've often talked about breaking these down into two or three different uh, programs and just go over like start a meeting and what you look for. You know, I, I tried to give you the, the 360 degree view of, of Zoom. And like I said, my advice is don't be bashful. Get on there and play around. Uh, yeah. Nothing will break. You know, nobody will know what you're doing. So it's all very secure. You won't lose any you know, vital information to anybody. And uh, there's always the Zoom platform itself if you're looking for help. They have a lot of great tools on there. So I guess with that, any further questions? No, thanks for your time. Thank you very Thank you much. Thank you very much. Thank you for your support. It was uh, informative. Have a wonderful afternoon. And this Thank will be you. on our YouTube channel once we're finished.
Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.